Welcome back to Think Brighter. Today, we're going to take a look at one of the worst chimpanzee attacks that made headlines around the world. Chimpanzees are fascinating creatures. They are one of the closest relatives to humans, sharing 98% of their DNA with us and displaying many human-like qualities such as problem-solving, emotions, and even tool use. However, despite their similarities to us, they are not suitable pets. Chimpanzees are highly intelligent and strong animals, and their natural instincts, including aggression, can make them dangerous to keep as pets. They can easily become frustrated, agitated and turn on their owners, causing serious harm or even death. According to a report by the Chimpanzee Sanctuary in the U.S., there have been over 200 recorded chimpanzee attacks in the past few decades. These incidents have resulted in serious injury and death to both the chimpanzee and the owner. That's exactly what happened with a pet chimp named Travis. Travis was born in 1995 and was raised by Jerome and Sandra Harold in Stamford, Connecticut. Travis was extremely intelligent, performing tasks that no other chimp had done before. He was raised in a unique environment where he was treated like a human child and had access to many of the comforts of a human home. He was able to dress himself, open doors with a key, he would help feed their horses, and he could even drive a car. When Travis wasn't driving a car, he could be found taking a ride in one. The Heralds considered Travis to be their son. And Sandra was known to carry him around like a baby. By all accounts, Travis appeared to be harmless. It was even reported that Travis would sometimes, wrestle with the neighbor. All seemed well at the Herald's house. That was until October 2003. Travis and his adopted dad Jerome were enjoying a nice drive. And out of nowhere, another driver passed by and threw an empty beer at Travis. Travis became furious and jumped out of the car and proceeded to chase after the driver. The incident took place on a busy road, where there were lots of eyewitnesses. Travis was running up and down this intersection, terrorizing motorists and causing a traffic jam. Police eventually arrived and made several attempts to lure Travis back into Jerome's car, by using his favorite snacks. But Travis was too smart. He wasn't falling for the officer's tricks. Travis would jump in the car to get the snacks. Then jump out, after eating the snacks. Travis even chased a few police officers that got too close to him. Eventually, the officers had no choice but to tranquilize him in order to get Travis inside the vehicle and back home. This incident left a very bad taste in the public eye. Travis had proven that he could have uncontrollable outbursts that could be deadly. In addition, this incident led to the passing of a Connecticut law, that would prohibit people from keeping primates that weighed more than 50 pounds as pets. It also required owners to apply for permits. Unfortunately, this new law wouldn't go into effect before Travis had his next outburst on February 16, 2009. Carla Nash was a close friend of Sandra Harold, and she had been around Travis for 14 years. Despite never feeling entirely comfortable about being around the 200-pound chimpanzee, Carla made a conservative effort to spend as much time around Sandra and Travis as possible. Which included feeding him and even caring for him whenever Sandra needed a sitter. However, on February 16, 2009, this long-standing relationship took a tragic turn while Carla was visiting her friend Sandra. Stand for 911, where's your emergency? Oh. This is Sandy Hill, 241 Rook, Black Crimson Road. What's Send the problem? The police. Send the police. What's they, the problem there? The, the, the chip killed my, my friend. What's the problem with your friend? Oh, please. What's the problem with your friend? I need to know. Send the police up with a gun, with a gun. Hurry you're, you're up. You're a gun. Please, hurry up. He's killing my girlfriend. What is the problem? He's killing my friend. Who's killing your friend? Chim my chimpanzee. Oh, your chimpanzee Please. is killing your friend. Yes. She, he ripped her apart. Hurry up. With a gun. Hurry up, please. There's someone on the way. With guns, please. You shoot him. What is the monkey doing? Tell me what the monkey is. He, he ripped her face off. He ripped her face off? He tried to shine at me. Please, please, okay, hurry. I need you to calm down a little bit. They're on the way. While the exact trigger of the attack by Travis on Carla Nash is not entirely clear, it's believed that it was related to a disagreement over a set of car keys. According to reports, Travis had taken Sandra's car keys and she was having a hard time getting Travis under control, so she called her best friend Carla to come over to help retrieve the keys. When Carla arrived, she approached Travis, while holding his favorite Tickle Me Elmo toy. Travis suddenly became aggressive and attacked her leaving her with severe injuries. The attack was so brutal that first responders were initially unable to determine the species of the attacker. Carla was rushed to the hospital, 
where she underwent multiple surgeries to try to repair the damage caused by the attack. Carla lost her hands, nose, lips, and eyes in the attack, and underwent a face transplant as part of her recovery process. The incident was widely covered in the media and sparked a conversation about the dangers of owning wild animals as pets. The incident also raised questions about the ethical implications of keeping wild animals as pets. Chimpanzees are highly intelligent and social animals that belong in the wild, not in captivity. While they may seem cute and cuddly, they have the potential to be extremely dangerous, as demonstrated by the attack on Carla Nash. In the case of Carla Nash, the attack could have been prevented if the owner had not kept Travis as a pet. Travis had shown signs of aggression before, including biting someone, and should have never been kept in a domestic setting. The tragedy of Carla Nash's attack highlights the importance of responsible pet ownership and the need for regulations on the ownership of wild animals. While Carla's story is a cautionary tale about the dangers of owning wild animals, it's also a story of resilience and determination. Despite her injuries, Carla has continued to recover and is now an advocate for animal rights. In an interview, Carla shared that she wanted to use her experience to raise awareness about the dangers of owning wild animals and to promote animal welfare. Carla's story also highlights the importance of medical advancements in the field of facial transplants. The face transplant that Carla underwent was only the third such procedure in the United States at the time, and it marked a significant milestone in the development of facial transplantation as a viable treatment option for severe facial disfigurements. So that's the story of one of the worst chimpanzee attacks in recent history. Would you visit your friend if they owned a pet chimpanzee? Let us know in the comments. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting stories. Thanks for watching and stay curious.